So, it has been a while since we've been together. Hello, again. A lot has transpired since I was here last. Let me just start by saying uh, I'm just grateful to be back on this platform. Uh, thank you, Reverend David, for inviting me back and giving me the opportunity not to just sing, but to also speak. So I moved back to New York. I was living in Los Angeles. I had lived in Los Angeles for about 13 years, 12, 13 years, and I wanted to be back on Broadway. I had not been on the stage since 2004, and Lion King was the last thing that I had done, so to speak, on that type of venue. So I moved back to New York, and I was living in Brooklyn. I take the train in, the D train in, to the city every morning. It was my meditation time. In November of 2018, I was on the train, and we were going over the river. And I closed my eyes in meditation, and I heard, don't follow the money, follow the vision. I opened my eyes immediately. I said, say that again. <laughs> I needed to hear it. Don't follow the money, Charles. Follow the vision. I promised. I said, okay, I know that was divine. I don't need to meditate this morning. I got my meditation in that message. I said, I will. But things began to change. De December rolled around, and in January, my brother got real sick. At the top of February, I'm doing these jobs. I haven't landed my Broadway show yet. I'm working as a caterer. And they call me and tell me, your brother's in the hospital. My brother's strong. I had taken my brother to the hospital three other times and he'd bounce back. So they keep him. And my sister calls and says, he's real sick. I said, how sick is he? She said, he's really sick. I got a call from a cruise ship about this time, Royal Caribbean. Charles, we'd love for you to come and be the head man on the ship and sing songs and be a part of a cast. And I'm in my mind thinking, whoo, that money would be good right about now. Then I hear this other voice and up, oh, remember what was spoken to you in November. Don't follow the money, Charles. Follow the vision. God had already given me the vision. The divine had already given me the vision. But I needed what? I needed some money. And I got fearful. I said, send the contract over. I read the contract. All I could hear was, don't follow the money. Follow the vision. I said, give me a pen. I'm going on the ship. Two weeks later, my brother passed. I'm trying to weigh everything, everything, everything. And in my mind now, I have come to the forefront of thinking, did I make a wrong decision? I know, I know God. So you know sometimes you try and bargain with God. But I did it because you know I did it. I don't want to be. We bury my brother on the 22nd of February. Rehearsals start the 1st of March. I stay the last 10 days with my mom in the month of February, and I go to Miami for rehearsals for two months, and then I'm on a cruise ship for six months. What have I gotten myself into? By this time, I'm thinking, wow, I should have heeded that voice Rehearsals were the hardest rehearsals I have ever been in in my life. Everything seemed a blur. And I called one of my mentors and I said, Dr. Sheila, whew, 
I am in a pickle. I said, I feel awful. I said, I feel really bad for my mother because I'm leaving her after my brother's passing. And I loved my brother. I haven't grieved. And I'm in rehearsals to put three shows together. And I'll be out on the water for six months. She saw right into what I was saying. She said, what did God tell you? I said, oh, you want to hear that too? (laughs) I said, in November, I distinctly heard God say, don't follow the money, follow the vision. She said, well, you need to go to God. Tell God all about it. And so I did. And at the end of the conversation, I did something. I said something that I very rarely would say up until that point. God, help me. Help me. Help me emotionally. Help me spiritually. Help me find. Help. And at every turn after that, I would hear God say, okay, we're turning a corner, go with me, leave it alone. I got it. I said, but I'm trying to get, leave it alone, I got it. How many of you have ever been on a cruise ship? Need I say more? (laughs) You're on the water. And sometimes when you're on the cruise ship, you cannot see land at all. That's how it was for me for six months. And I would just call out, call out, call out. And I heard a voice in my room one day says, it's time to go deeper. Let's go deeper. I said, what have you gotten me into? This seems like Jonah. Wait a minute. I feel like I have just missed it all together. But one thing that I will say is in the midst of our decisions, even when we feel like we have made the wrong choice, God is always there. The divine is always there to say, hey, if you just follow me. Because there's something in this, even though it feels as if it is for naught. I guess it was halfway through. One of the beautiful places, one of my favorite cities now is Dublin, Ireland. I love Dublin. We went to Dublin, Ireland. As a matter of fact, we went to 15 different countries. Dublin was one of my favorites. And after I had been in Dublin, have you ever gotten that place where you are on your journey and then all of a sudden you're going pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, and then it just sinks? So, oh my goodness, what is this now? What is this? And I felt like, okay, I need to leave the ship. I need to jump ship. Not literally jump ship, you know what I meant. But get off of the ship. And at every turn, God would say, wait a minute. I got this. Let's turn the corner and see what this is all about. The lessons, the deepness. There were three times on that ship that I had full on drenched with tears. I needed to grieve. I needed to grieve my brother, but I also grieved my father. And I think I'm sharing this with you today for, for, for a lot of different reasons, for, but for one thing to say to you, wherever you are, if there is a place inside of you where you think you made a wrong turn, I shouldn't have done that. That was the biggest mistake of I shouldn't have done. I want, to, I want to challenge you today to ask God, but what was in that? What is in it? Because you can go back and get that lesson. There's always a lesson. And at this time in our definite history, there's always this lesson that we can go back and get. That's the reason why mercies are renewed every morning. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, 
Thy hand hath provided. Even when you think that there is not a hand of God over the situation. I've done this. I heard the voice. I heard you say, don't follow the money. Follow the vision. I went the other way, but God says, I'm right behind you. I'm not going anywhere. The time in our life when it seems as if everything has been cut off. There were times on that ship where I felt like, I don't know where you are, God. I don't know where you are. And all of a sudden, somebody would show up. Have you ever been in a situation or just walking past someone? They're not talking to you. They may be talking to somebody else. They may be talking to themselves and they may say, everything's going to be all right. It was for you. You heard it. What I'm saying is that every turn in every corner, there is an example of God's hand in our life. And all the spirit is saying to do is follow me. I got you. Am I talking to anybody out there today? Do you know when there is a crisis in your life and you feel like there is nothing more that I can do? Stand. Stand. And let the water literally wash over those sharp edges. I don't know why I chose to to talk about this today but it was on my heart. Because I believe every one of us goes through that point in our our lives where we think, whew, what a big mistake I've made. I don't think I'll ever get over that. And then we cry for help. God help me. If you just say it. And if you're in that place right now, you don't have to say it out loud. You can just whisper it or think it in your mind. God, help me. And yes, the season is coming. The Christmas season is coming. God, help me. Because <laughs> the Christmas season is a, is a bit much sometimes. And when we go through the Christmas season, it's like going to Dublin. We have such a good time, and then all of a sudden, there's a dip. So what was the lesson during the Christmas season? To be with family and perhaps to be around people that you don't connect so well with. To be on the waters when the boat is rocking and you think, oh my goodness, is it going to tip over? I've been there and I'm sure that you have too. Let's take a breath right here together. And to know that the very breath that we breathe is the very life force that guides us. That in this moment it is saying, let me have it. Give it to me. Whatever it is. The emotional junctures that we're in. I cannot find my emotional landing at all, God. It just seems like I'm all over the spectrum. Let me have it. The finances in my life, I don't know what's going on with my, let me have it. My living situation, I don't know where I'm going to live. I just got off of the, let me have it. Whatever it is, my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter, my in-laws, let me have it. And then while you go through it, ask, what's the lesson? Because we're going to be better on the other side. Yes? So I'm on the other side of the pond now. And what's better? What's better is I'm here. The boat didn't tip over. I'm standing straight up. My mother is 90 years old. I get to see her again. I'm here with you. And there will never be another outpicturing of this ever again, ever another assembly like this, ever. And so we get to experience this together. And yes, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all of that is coming. But all we have to do is say, okay, I'm going to try and take my hands off of it, God, and watch what happens. But we are invested in the lesson. What is all of this about? The hardest time in our lives 
are some of the most important times because we get to learn more about who and what we are and all of these beautiful songs we sing at Unity. They give us something to sing about so they're not pretty words and lyrics. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Yes, it is. Why? Because I'm here. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. All of those times where you felt like, wow, my God, I just need something to step on. I feel like I'm just. I see glory on each face. Look out among you. Surely the presence of God is in this place. That's all I have for you this morning. It's been wonderful. Thank you for your time. And what I will leave you with is when we go into this season, whatever you want to call it, Thanksgiving or Christmas, and things begin to wind and we begin to turn a little bit out of sorts, because it will do that, stop and take a breath and listen for God to say, let's turn the corner. I've got this. You ready? Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.